Our project, Sustainable Travel in Academia, uses evidence and then action by us as academics to understand how significant our carbon footprint is from our academic activities and then to demonstrate that we can actually have good academic careers without such a high carbon footprint. The aims of the project are to quantify in some detail the carbon footprints associated with academic activities, principally travelling to conferences and other events. Um, but not just to quantify that, but then to compare that with our commitments that we've made internationally at the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and try to see how, how they can be reconciled or if they can or if they cannot be. We've actually delivered on this in, in several ways. First, as academics, um, we've, we've sat behind our computers with our calculators and understood the science. And there's been a lot of work been doing that now since probably since 2005, really. Um, the next thing we've tried to demonstrate is that actually we can um, act differently as academics. So quite a number of us here within the Tyndall Centre at the University of Manchester have changed how we go about doing our academic day-to-day -day activities. So um, I personally haven't flown now since 2004, but I have other colleagues that have, have not flown also for, for similar, maybe not, not always quite so long, but similar amounts of time. But indeed, many of my other colleagues who have not stopped flying are flying a lot less than they were before. And the other thing we have done with other colleagues at the um, Tyndall Centre in uh, University of East Anglia and, and other centres around the UK is developed a carbon action tracker where we can actually um, follow our, our carbon emissions and see how they're coming down year after year as individual academics. And that particular project has now been taken up by other universities elsewhere as well. The work that we have done has impacted not just in the UK, but also in the European Union. So we've had a lot of engagement with MEPs, trying to drive the agenda um, within the European Union. We've been invited on numerous times to go and talk at the, uh, at the Parliament there. We've also engaged with several other governments now around the EU on these issues. There's a, a website that we did not start, but was started by other colleagues in, in the US. Uh, they've called the Flying Less website, and there are partners now from Korea, from Australia, from New Zealand, a lot more Americans, a lot more Europeans. There are academics on there explaining why it is they've either stopped their flying or significantly curtailed their flying. This ex has extended now beyond this to some other high profile figures in the EU engaging in these sort of sets of issues. To date, there's been a small core team of us who've worked on these issues. That's Alice Larkin, Sarah Manda, Kylie McLaughlin, John Broderick and Ruth Wood, and myself here in, at Tyndall Centre Manchester. And um, although we've had a fairly significant impact, we've got to take that now beyond just the universities, to companies, to councils, to, to governments, to the EU, um, and, and wider internationally, to start to really start to, to, to think about what are the alternatives to continual growth in aviation. Aviation growth is incompatible with our climate change commitments. So we have to take this to say beyond the academic community to, to the business community and the political community. Um, and then I think we start to have some hope of taking the climate change and aviation agenda, um, or at least put it in line with the Paris Agreement.